Hi, lovely people of the internet. My name is Gregor Fries and welcome to episode number two of uh, the pedal board project where we build a studio board for our studio here, but only that we're actually building two boards. And today we have a sponsor, uh, which are my friends from Sandberg Guitars here in Germany. So let's get started. So back to the board cam. Uh, there are two things that I want to achieve today. First of all, I want to finish this board because this is simple. This is easy. Should just take me a few minutes. And then I want to just put everything on the big board that I'm able to grab it with, uh, with one hand without any of the pedals falling off. So that's what I want to achieve today. Let's get started. First of all, of course, we need to fix these pedals to the board. Um, these two don't have any of the plates yet. This one doesn't have a plate yet. Only this one here, as you can see, this is the big plate. So we can already lock this pedal in place like this. So we need stick on things for the other pedals. Let's start with the Strobo Stomp. There are different ways to do this, so let me show you what I mean by that. These again are these plates uh, from Temple Audio that you stuck, stick on these pedals. Uh, they have a sticky tape on the side which just sticks on there and then we have these little notches and this screw which comes from, through the board goes into here and then fixes the pedal to the board. Temple Audio always says just use one of those plates. Uh, I'm personally, I'm not a big fan. Of course it's these plates are not very cheap, so it's of, of course more affordable to use only one. But the issue is, uh, this is the foot switch, that means the pedal will always be pressed down like this. If you put it in the middle, the pedal will always rock a little bit. That's why I personally, I prefer to have two plates on here. You can either have two of those, or you can just put a big one here where the switch is and then have a little one up here just to make sure there's a second point where this is hold in place. So let's get these plates on. What I like to do is putting these plates on the board first to see uh, the exact size and how far you can spread them out because I think just for sake of physics it makes out to spread them out as far as you can to prevent any tipping over. So that looks good to me so we can get um, this off. So that's that and now we can carefully place the pedal on these plates. Just make sure everything is centered, everything is nice. That looks good to me. So, pressing it down and now I can turn the board around and fix this in place. I will only use one screw, no actually I will use two screws because this is an easy board. We won't have to take it apart again. So next pedal is of course the Jive and uh, this time I'm going to do it a little bit different because now uh, there's not so much space in between these two, that's why I want to have the cable in there already. Um, again, we're using EBS cables here. I love those. Uh, they come in different lengths. This is a 10 centimeters, this is 18, this is 28. I also have 58 uh, centimeter cables. I just love those. They have such a small footprint on the board. They're just perfect. So, cable goes in here. Goes through here. Oh yeah, there we have it. That's why on these boards, I usually don't fix pedals before everything is wired. So this looks much better. So now let's finally install the Jive. Of course, uh, goes into the input. This looks fantastic to me. And just already look at this cable management. I, I love this so much. So plates. I just realized maybe for the big board, I don't have enough of these medium sized plates. So in this case, I will combine a medium sized and a small one. So let's do that. Those and now again, carefully and well centered. Yeah, no, that's not good. Uh, now something has happened, which I don't like is uh, I didn't place it perfectly. This one looked over the pedal, so I had to take him off again. Uh, taking these plates off is, I don't know, nothing, something that should be avoided. Let's put it like this. So I think this was the one and then probably here. So yeah, let's put it in place. That's that. Let's lock this in again. I think the Rheingold sits very well here, just put it in place so it stays there. And finally the power thing will just go here in the middle between these two for now. 
and I'm using only one plate for this because I'm never stepping on it. But before we move on to the big board, let me talk just a quick minute about the sponsor of this video, which is really cool because these are my friends from Sandberg Guitars here in Germany. You all probably, I mean, you all definitely know this bass. Uh, this is my this space. This is my Sandberg California TT4 masterpiece in Tobacco Sunburst. I use, I have this space since 2011. It's absolutely fantastic. In my opinion, the best sounding Sandberg bass I've ever played, possibly ever built. I don't know. It's it's just in a fantastic bass. And uh, over the years, we got so many requests for those that we finally decided this year with Sandberg Guitars to make it an actual model which we have here. So if you love this bass, if you've heard this many times and you fell in love with it, now is the easiest time ever to get one of those. This is the Sandberg Guitars Bass the World Bass. We've introduced this over the summer, but um, some of you probably were on vacation. So let's let me just do this again in a quick, in a just quick way. Um, this is the limited run in orange, which is super cool because a club one who makes these pickups had these cool orange pickup covers for us. And so I thought, let's make a whole orange bass. This will look dope and yeah, it does. So we have a Swamp Ash body for this particular model here. Uh, they probably will be older in future, but that's another topic. We have a Canadian Hard Rock Maple Neck. We have a 34 inch scale, of course. We have a 14 inch fretboard radius, which is slightly modern, slightly vintage somewhere in the middle. I think these are super comfortable to play. Uh, this bass is, of course, passive again. We have volume, volume, tone. We have the Klopman pickups, absolutely amazing vintage jazz bass type of pickups. And we have the simple Goto style bridge on these bases, which I prefer. And yeah, that's the base. So if you want to check it out, uh, search out for, for a Sandberg dealer near you or just Google it. One thing just that I've noticed, not every dealer is calling this the base, the world base in the way we are actually written. Some call it the base, the world base in three different uh, separate words, or some even call it the BTW base. So if you want to Google this base, maybe use those search terms as well. That's it. On with the video. So that's it. All the pedals are in place. Uh, they are not coming off the board again unless I want them to, of course. And all we need to do now is uh, just connect the power thing for all of those. Uh, I have again EBS cables, uh, again with those amazing flat heads, uh, just as the patch cables they make. And here we have even a daisy chain. Uh, Thing, which we will need for this board here because uh, this one has only two outputs but obviously we have three pedals at the moment so uh, yeah power number one where is it where is it placed we are down here that means we come from here that goes in the cable comes out here and goes into the power supply It's working, perfect. And then we have, of course, the other cable, um, which we will also put through here. Also goes in there. Then we turn the whole thing around and we need to make one of the two cables, which just has one of those ends. We, we need to make this a power cable, which it is now. So, and then let's see where we actually need the power with the jive. With the jive, it's up here, and with the tuner also. So this goes in, this goes in, those, oh, and everything is not working. Why is the tuner not working? Probably needs an input cable. Yeah. So, wonderful. Everything is working. That's the recording board. I needed to finish this today because we have a session coming up in two days. And yeah, I will need that. So, cool. So, what we will do is, of course, we go in here, which these handles look like they're on the way, but actually for all the pedals I've tried, actually, it puts, uh, works perfectly to go with the cable through the handle into the input. So that works. And then we will go out straight here. In case I want to EQ, I want to have an EQ, I just have a patch cable around and of course connect these two and then this will be the output. So yeah, the small recording board is done. Ta-da! 
So the big board, uh, at the beginning of this video, I said uh, we are going to put this together now, but this is not actually going to happen on camera because I just edited the first part of this video, the thing that you just watched, and I realized this makes for incredibly boring YouTube. So let's not do this again. But uh, instead, let me get you a quick run through of um, what I'm planning to do while you will not be watching. Uh, there have been some little changes since the last video, and now I have also an idea for the order I want to have the pedal. So let me give this to you real quick and then we can all go home, <laughs> I guess. So again, it starts with the uh, 29 pedal with the Yuna, which is a buffer. Um, this one has an effects loop uh, that will have two pedals in it. Uh, first of all, the Red Mark from Jam pedals, which is again the Red Mark, and we have the Red Law, which is based on the Red. This is a loop and then uh, the normal output from here goes into... Where are we going? We go here, into the Chromatron. Yeah, that's the uh, envelope filter. From here, um, we go into the lysis, and this is the new pedal. Uh, yesterday, which I, I caught it yesterday, you saw it last week, I talked about the Imperial Mark II from Solid Gold of X, an incredible fuss, but I decided to against it and decided still to stick with Solid Gold of X, but with a different pedal. Uh, this is the lysis. Uh, this is a cool pedal for filters, for all kinds of patterns are in there. And I thought this is um, more interesting for this board because I already have a good bunch of drives on here, first of all. And second of all, um, this is not just my studio board for recording here. This is also my sitting just there and playing bass and having fun board. So uh, yeah, this is what this pedal is for. So I can create some cool textures and just do some cool things. Um, next in line uh, follows the subspace, uh, modern distortion that we mostly need for modern active basses because these pedals are not so great for that, but this one is. From here we go into the MPEG Subblaster, which is an octaver. From here we go into the jam pedals Harmonious Monk, uh, which is uh, once again a vibrato. And uh, usually I, this is a modulation pedal, which I would usually have uh, much earlier uh, in the uh, signal chain, usually right after the drives. But in this case, because it's a tremolo and it's a really cool effect to affect the entire sound and make dynamic stuff with it, I, I, I just I have an idea. I really want to have this kind of behind in the signal chain so it can also affect all the distortions and, and uh, the octave and these kinds of things. So yeah, I mean, I can change this up later anyway, but uh, this is what, what I'm doing for now. And then of course we go first into the delay, the echo station from Universal Audio, and then we go into the reverb, and then this will go back into the board, of course, into the patch bay and out. That's the plan. And uh, you will see this come together. I think I think I will put these uh, the pedals on here uh, by myself, and I think in the next episode, we will talk about wiring the stuff up and uh, yeah, just just looking at the, the fun stuff that comes with these uh, board projects like the, the power supplies, the LEDs, of course. And so that's a good plan. But uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. This is awkward. Bye bye. Based on rule.